Hey guys, it's Comcalio Studios here and I'm not in my usual area because this park is packed. They must have sold a ton of diamond passes because the preferred lot is pretty full, almost completely full on this half. And the main lot is also really full. So it is a Friday night, but I wouldn't think it'd be this crowded. It is absolutely packed, but we're gonna try to make the best of it. And of course we are here after the 2024 announcement. So we're gonna be checking for construction progress on the flash vertical velocity, as well as every other thing that we know that they're doing for 2024 Great Adventure. Here we have some advertisements for the giant sale, which was just extended to September 10th. Passes are super cheap right now. We're in the park now. We found Tom. Sure. I'm sure there's gonna be others joining us later as well. But like I said, we're gonna be looking around to see any remnants or any signs of announcements or advertisements or anything for the 2024 editions. Like I said, park is packed, so I don't know how many rides are gonna be going on today, but we'll see. Over here by the fountain, there's tons of red mark out in the area in front of Funnel Cake Factory, all over the place. Not sure what that may be leading to, but it is everywhere, so could be for the 50th, could be for an upcoming event this year, I guess we'll see. So over here, we are at the presumed site of both where the bricks will be as well as where the reopening of Dream Street will be. This is the paintball building I keep talking about. It is highly rumored that this will be removed and then Dream Street will finally be restored so you can see El Toro and the big wheel just in a full 180 degree direction turn. So it'll definitely be really, really nice. And the bricks are gonna be a nice added touch as well. Of course, not having to go through this game center anymore will be great. So very excited to see that. I'm not really seeing any mark out or anything like that for this project quite yet, but we'll see as time goes on. Fright Fest prep is highly underway as they point to the Western area, which has changed names a lot. I think I remember it most as Bone Butcher Territory. I think it's something else now. It might be pirate themed if I remember right. Um, over here, I believe, is the site of either Conjuring or Saw X and the other one will also be in the Golden Kingdom. So they changed it up a little bit from what I was expecting. Those will be ready a little later from what I understand, um, but very excited for Fright Fest this year. There are tons of empty roads on El Toro, which tells me time to ride it. Just did two rides on Toro. We kind of got unlucky because when we got there, the station was empty, but then trains took a little while to dispatch and then the line filled up. So now there's no more empty seats, but two rides, pretty good, running fast and pretty smooth. As we wait for the park to clear out a little bit, going to our favorite spot, the VIP lounge. And honestly, I'm really curious to see how they reroute this whole area because I doubt it's going to stay in this current configuration. Safari Off-Road Adventure is returning next year and they will be having this station open as well as an entrance at the main Wild Safari entrance. So I imagine this will be reopened for the Safari Off-Road Adventure, which makes me wonder if they're going to keep this as a VIP lounge. Maybe they're going to convert it back to Best of the West. If they're going to have the split off here as opposed to up there. I'm really curious and I'm sure we'll receive answers as time goes on. We're over here by Log Flume, which has been confirmed by the park recently to be receiving a massive refurbishment for 2024. I haven't seen anything change, but I'm definitely going to be watching for progress. As I imagine, for starters, the turntable will definitely be getting a lot of work. I imagine this whole area will be refurbished heavily. Yeah. And maybe we'll see that final drop over there added back. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Up here by Joker. We have new Fright Fest decor for Demon District, at least that's what it used to be called, right outside of Oktoberfest, as you can see there. Oktoberfest, like I said, is going on. Started a little early this year compared to last year, which is great, but very excited for Fright Fest, which starts in just about a week. So stay tuned for some Fright Fest content. First, there's a preview weekend where not everything will be open, but most stuff will be open. Then following that weekend, there will be everything open. So very ex excited for Fright Fest. There is the stage for what is usually blood drums, all set up, ready to go. And up here we have a new setup for the event as well. Here we have the giant pumpkin head man up in front of the big wheel, right in front of this archway that has been built for the events. They don't have all the Fright Fest stuff out for it quite yet, but they're getting there. And right here we have this uh, formerly gray box that has now been decorated with graves all over it. So I'm curious what this will be. Maybe this will be where they sell the haunted maze passes to make it a little more clear because reflections is right here. So I guess we'll have to wait and see what this winds up being. We are in the last couple of days of operation for the Coca-Cola Gaming House. It ends on September 4th. So if you're coming here for Labor Day weekend, definitely check it out before it closes for good. 
walking towards the future site of the flash vertical velocity coming next year. This view will look very different a year from now. Be a giant spike right behind this attraction. So the opinions have been pretty all over the place for the flash. I personally am excited for it. But one person I know definitely has strong opinions is Austin from Derail Coasters. Austin, what do you think about the flash vertical velocity? Honestly, I think the flash is almost a perfect fit for this park. Unfortunately, the only thing that holds it back is the fact that it's not gonna run two trains or have a turntable. However, the flash offers a lot of variety to this park that this park is already lacking in such as a multi-launch and you're also getting a shuttle coaster which we haven't had one since the chiller um if you guys want to find out more about that i actually just released a video on my channel explaining how i feel about the flash so if you guys want to check that out feel free to at derail coasters go check it out right up there up is Twister. We just got off of Twister and we rode in the back again because we noticed it's more intense back there. Such a great flat ride. One of the best in the park. I really hope it sticks around because it's a really fun ride. Austin? I love that ride. Honestly, I'm going to be really sad if that's going away because it's one of the best flat ride experiences you can get at this park. I mean, there's nothing like it here, so. Definitely. We don't show this ride enough love. I think this year is the most any of us have ridden it in recent years and it's undeserved how much we used to not ride it because it's a great ride. Oh, it's really good. I really hope it sticks around for a bit myself. Something surprising about the slate of 50th anniversary announcements is that parachutes was not mentioned. So they did close at the end of last year. It was confirmed at the beginning of this year that they were not returning, but they have been SBNO all year. And I don't really see the tower coming down anytime soon because that's a giant undertaking. But I am surprised that it's pretty much stayed exactly the same all year. So I'm really curious to see what winds up happening with this ride. Hey, watch yourself, watch yourself. Zumanjaro, in a rare instance, actually had a line. So we're going to go somewhere else, even though we already made the half mile walk back here. But that's fine. Well, the horn just went off. So right about now. There it goes. I guess we know where we're going now. We just did a few rides on Ka. How was it? It was amazing. Ka was running in boost mode the first few rides, and that is an awesome experience regardless what you get on it. So Yeah, boost mode Ka is tough to beat. That was a great ride. We haven't been on it too much lately, but it's so nice to get back on. It was awesome. That's all I got to say. Really great, and the sunset view was spectacular. Yeah. Fantastic. You can't beat Kindercon Sunset Rides. Boost mode, incredible. Wow. Absolutely. We've all been dying to go to the bathroom, so we gotta go do that first, and then we'll figure out where we're going. But before we go to Justice League, time for some Rita's. I guess we just have bad luck. Looks like our next ride of the day will be Batman at night. Just got off of Batman. How was that, Owen? It was good, but I wish it was after burn. Yeah, fair. Very good. Night ride on this is really good. Even for second row, that was running really fast. It's running cuckoo right now. <laughs> it was very good. We just got off of Nitro. Actually, the last ride before it went down for a couple minutes it was running amazing we rode row eight that is probably the fastest nitro ride i've had all year and it was a night ride which just added to it it was nitro it was flying it was great but i have to fix some of the sunglasses now and they, they they popped out it was really good it was really good nitro is flying <laughs> for some reason devil has a line so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through metropolis and see if justice league reopened if Justice League didn't reopen Austin, we're going on Green Lantern. His favorite ride in the park. Yes. Time for the last ride of the night, Green Lantern.
of the last ride of the night on Green Lantern, something I haven't done since like 2017. Uh, half of us were in the front row, the other half of us were in the back row. It was running really good, very smooth, insanely intense and fast. This ride gets too much hate. Yes, my legs are killing me right now, but it's worth it. It's a really good ride, very fun. And yeah, you can very easily enjoy it. How was it? It was really good. We neglect this ride a little too often. We had fun. It was fast and very intense. All right, guys, it's oh me, boy, the oh Green boy. Lantern Pioneer. <laughs> this ride is amazing. If you know how to ride stand-up coasters, this ride will literally do the best thing you could ever imagine for it. And I guess it helps when you're buzzed, too. Hey, 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 hey. We, we don't talk about that aspect of it, okay? It actually was a lot better than I remembered it to. Yeah, so it was good. Uh, getting the front row for it was pretty nice. It was good. Are you asking me? I guess it so. It was good, but don't wear your glasses. Yeah. My ears are killing me. You never want to wear sunglasses or glasses with a strap on a B&M because your ears will really be crying afterwards. But that was a good last ride of the night. That is going to conclude our night here at Six Flags Great Adventure. We had a great day. Uh, usually don't come nighttime during the summer, but probably better than coming early. Lines weren't too bad. After we waited a little while, we got on a good amount of rides with some good people. If you guys enjoyed today's vlog, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos coming soon to Hollywood Studios. Goodbye, guys.